in Jerusalem, in the old city of Jerusalem, uh, standing in front of the broad, what's called the Broad Wall. It's called the Broad Wall because it's very broad, uh, built by King Hezekiah. It's seven meters wide. Uh, it was the height of uh, that blue, uh, blue and white uh, sign shows the, the height of it. Uh, uh, the king of Assyria, Shennacherib, had Jerusalem surrounded. Uh, not only just Jerusalem surrounded, he had the whole country surrounded. He had brought in his army uh, from uh, the east and attacked to the north, took northern Israel captive. Uh, and, and, and the end of the Israel kingdom in the north forever, uh, the ancient one and then came down eventually a couple years after that into Judea, taking city after city of Judea, taking Lachish, the second most fortified and strongest and most important city uh, next to Jerusalem. And now uh, Shennacherib has uh, Israel to the north, Syria to the east, and now he's got Judah to the west and to the south. Egypt cannot even come and help. And so Jerusalem is a caged bird is what Shennacherib said he was. And so Hezekiah, realizing this, the Bible says, when Hezekiah saw that Shennacherib intended to wage war against Jerusalem, he consulted with his officials and military staff about blocking off the water from the springs outside the city, and they helped him. And they gathered a large group of people who blocked all the springs and the streams and said, why should the kings of Assyria come and get plenty of water? Then he worked hard at repairing all the broken sections of the wall and building towers on it. And he built another wall outside that one and reinforced the terraces of the city of David. He also made large weapons and shields. So he did this fortification. He built this, dug this tunnel from the Gihon Spring to the Pool of Siloam so they'd have water inside, stopped up all the other springs so that they wouldn't have water. And then he worked on building up the walls and strengthening his kingdom militarily giving protection. But he also told the people, he called all the people before them in the city square at the city gate, and he encouraged them with these words, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the vast army with him. For great, there is a greater power with us than with him. Now, the Assyrians had a much stronger army, much more people, many more people, many more soldiers, uh, chariots and horsemen and, and much better weaponry, took in city after city after city and country, whole countries. And yet he said, greater power is with us than with him. For with him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people gained confidence from what King Hezekiah said. So he, he built all this up, trusting, doing all that he could by God's strength, working through him and through his country, protecting their water sources, protecting their, 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 their houses, building it up. But at the same time, he continued to trust in the Lord to fight the battles for them. There's this combination going on of trusting God. God is mighty, God is all powerful, God is able to do it with us or without us, but at the same time, doing all that they can by God's strength to protect themselves and do what they can. It's kind of like praying in our homes and then locking our doors at night, right? It's not presumptuous to, to leave your doors unlocked and say, well, God's gonna protect me. God's gonna help me. No, we pray, we trust God's gonna protect us, but we still lock our doors at night. We still lock our cars. Um, and so then what happened? That night, King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, cried out in prayer to heaven about this. And the Lord sent an angel who annihilated, one angel, an angel, who annihilated all the fighting men and the commanders and the officers in the camp of the Assyrian king. And then he withdrew to his land in disgrace. And when he went into the temple of his God, some of his sons, his own flesh, Shennacherib's, and blood and cut him down with the sword. So Shennacherib, he takes Lachish, he builds this humongous uh, relief depicting the, the battle and how he, he defeated him, nine feet tall, many feet wide, showing the great conquest and how he brought in his army and took many captives and defeated the towers and knocked down and the battering rams. Jerusalem, there's nothing. He's got no record of conquering Jerusalem. He's got no record of the war in Jerusalem. Why? Because the Lord fought. And in one night, an angel of the Lord 
killed 7,000 of the Assyrian army and laid them flat. They went out the next morning, the Bible says they found dead corpses. Well, they were all dead corpses. It's kind of a, 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 a double saying, right? They were dead and they were corpses. The corpses were dead. They were dead, dead. They were doubly dead because the Lord struck them down and protected Jerusalem, protected his people. While at the same time, they did what they could by God's strength to protect themselves as well. And we also need to trust in the Lord with all our hearts, with all our souls. And at the same time, do what we can by God's strength to take care of ourselves health-wise, protecting ourselves mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally.